Hi, welcome to Parametric House. Uh, in this Grasshopper tutorial, we wanted to model a parametric dome and convert it into a quad mesh, as you can see here. Uh, the concept is really easy. What you want to do is to make a an hemisphere and then cut them with a series of cutters. So here you can see that I can change the radius of the dome, which is going to be this one. Then I can define the location of the cutters easily by changing these sliders. Uh, so these are going to control that. Uh, I've defined an ellipse, so here you can see that you can define the first radius and the second radius to design uh, a better cutting uh, profile. And at the end you can convert that into a quad mesh, which you can use in your project. This is uh, going to be useful, especially if you want to uh, define the opening based on the radius for the first one and the second one, how much you want the opening to be, and also the depth. You can also download an additional file, which you can cut the dome with a series of curves, uh, which is just outside the boundary. And you can download that to, to even learn more and make more complicated uh, dome surfaces. Okay, let's get started from scratch. Uh, what I want to do is to first design a sphere uh, to uh, cut it with the cutters. So I'm going to go to the surface primitive and use this uh, sphere component. And for the input, uh, there's a base plane, uh, which is going to define uh, the sphere. Let me just explain this with a radius. I'm going to give that a radius, and make this a little bit bigger. And this is the radius of the sphere. Uh, the first and most important thing is about this. Uh, the first thing I want to explain here is that we can connect a uh, params point to the base input as a plane, and it's going to assume it's an xy plane. Uh, as you can see here in Rhino viewport, this curve is a little bit uh, more black than the other ISO curves. So this is going to be used in the cutting. Uh, of the sphere. So for example, uh, let's go to Rhino and check this out. If I bring the sphere here and let's draw a plane and trim this using the trim, just trim the bottom, okay, and assume that we have this hemisphere here and I want to cut this with a circle, so I want to cut it like this and uh, first let's split the hemisphere with this circle. So I'm going to say split with this and just uh, check this out. It's going to give you two parts and that is because the seam of the sphere or the hemisphere is exactly here. So that's going to bring us some problems as we go forward. And what we have to do here is to bring the seam exactly in the XY plane because we wanted to design a dome. Uh, to do that, we can give, X, instead of an XY plane, we can give an XZ plane and a YZ plane. doesn't really matter. We just have to bring the seam to any uh, direction on the ground so we don't get uh, any problems when we want to cut the sphere. Okay, uh, after uh, making that we just need the half of the sphere so I'm going to go to the surface utility and pick up this isotrim tool which is going to just select a part of it so let's just do that and reparameterize it to make it between uh, actually 0 and 1 and also it's going to make the second direction between 0 and 1. So that's exactly uh, what reparameterize means. And now we can select it from a part of domain 2. Just go to the math domain and we have this construct domain 2. We can give it to here. So let's turn off the sphere. And for example, if I give this a number slider to the U minimum or U maximum, you can see that we can select a part of it. So what we want to do is to select from 0 to uh, 0 0.5, right? So here the default is 0 and just give that a 0 0.5 and And that's it. That's how uh, we can produce the hemisphere easily and now we can control it with the radius and the location. Okay. Uh, after defining this one, uh, what we want to do is to also 
draw a series of cutters uh, on the sphere. Uh, for this tutorial, I want to draw circles around the boundary because it's going to give you more uh, exercise uh, for some of the tools we have in Grasshopper. So I'm going to go to the curve and use this primitive circle. If I give the uh, point to the plane, it's going to assume it's an XY plane and I'm going to give the same radius. As you can see here, we can uh, use this circle for uh, defining the outer circles for cutting. And now let's just go to curve uh, analyzes evaluate curve to pick a point on a curve. And uh, what it does is actually if I give the circle to it and you reparameterize it, if you give a number between 0 and 1, it's going to evaluate it and give the point. Uh, the problem with this is that we don't have the plane because when we want to design the ellipse, for example, if I select this point, this direction is going to be the X, and this is going to be the Y, and we need the circle or the ellipse to be exactly in that plane. Uh, if you want to see uh, the plane we are using here is actually it's an XY plane. I'm going to make the planes a little bit bigger so you can see them. Let's go to preview plane size and make it like 10 times, maybe even like 30. And exactly the evaluate curve is making these kind of planes, which is not right. Uh, instead of using the evaluate curve, I'm going to go to the curve analyzes and use this horizontal frame and give it to the circle, reparameterize it, give this parameter to that. And now you can see that it's actually exactly on the boundary. Now we can make three sliders and instead of a slider I'm going to go to the params menu and uh, use this gene pool. Double click it. It's between 0 and 1. We need three number sliders because we need three locations and that's it. So now I'm just going to give that to the location I'm going to select and now you can see that we can select those planes. Uh, okay, now that we have the planes, we can design an ellipse or a circle on it. So I'm going to go to the curve, primitive, and instead of a circle, let's go with an ellipse. Okay, ellipse, give that to the plane. And now we need just to define radius one and radius two for this. Uh, to do that, I'm going to also uh, make a copy control C control V of the gene pool. Uh, let's make it between one and a hundred and give that to the radius. I don't know if it's a big number or not. So anyway, that's not bad. Let's just go to one to 50 and also give another one to the second radius. And now you can see that we can control those ellipses really easy and design the dome. So that is really useful if you want to design the ellipses. Before we want to split that, we have to project that on the sphere. So I'm going to go to project. We have this project curve into B rep. Remember that one. You can also find it in the curve utility here project. So we want to project the ellipses onto the hemisphere. The direction is by default the Z, but it's a good practice to always give it a correct direction. So this is the direction we want to project it. And as you can see here, it's projecting on the sphere and we have the curves. Now we can use that for cutting. Uh, intersection, physical, and surface split. Split the surface with a bunch of curves, which is a really great tool. And I can give that here and give this to the input. Remember, I uh, usually use this technique for most of the projects. Uh, the only exception is when you have lots of data you want to define that. So for example, uh, send some of curves to another surface and those things. But I usually flatten it because I want to say that the surface I want to split is with all of those curves, not with uh, one of them then the second one. So for example, if I don't flatten here, you can see that the fragments are a lot, a lot because uh, it's going to first uh, surface split with the first ellipse and it's going to give you this one like this. Then it's going to cut it with this one and give you this surface and it's going to be this one. 
with this one it's going to give you this output and then it's going to cut this one and give you this surface right so when you don't flatten it's going to actually run this three times because the input is in groups three times for each of those surfaces so just flatten this so you want to say that i want to cut it with all of those curves uh, okay, after we have those fragments, you can see we have four of them. Uh, the problem is that we don't know which one is the inner part of the dome. So if I go to set and list item and select that, you can see that this is going to be the first one, the second one, uh, the third one, and we will have some problems. Uh, for example, if I just intersect this one with another one like this, it's going to be a lot of uh, parts and we just want to select for example this section right for example we don't need the inner parts so how can we write this in the algorithm so I'm just going to bring that back and uh, I'm going to use a technique I always use when I want to select it especially if there's some uh, geometric rules uh, around this first of all if you have a series of uh, fragments especially the surface split is going to give you uh, no information about the surfaces. They are going to be randomly ordered in the output So you can go to the vector grid and popular geometry and just give this a count of one That means just make a one random point on all of those surfaces. You can see it's just like one is here one is there and uh, It doesn't really matter because the random point it's uh, producing uh, is going to be anywhere on the surface then what I want to do is to project use this project tool and onto the XY plane it's going to project it on the ground uh, obviously it's going to this point is going to be inside the circle but what we need here is that this uh, projected point is inside this ellipse this one is inside this one and so on and so forth so we just want to say check out if these points are inside the bound the cutters what we have produced here okay so what i want to do is to flatten those points so they are in one group four points we have here then just go to the curve analyzes and check out this one point in curves we want to check if these points are inside the boundaries and and as you can see here it's going to give you a relationship so it says outside coincident and uh, inside right and uh, as you can see here those points are inside this cutter right this point is inside this cutter so zero is going to be actually a false if we give it to a boolean and a one is going to be true two is also going to be true so if you have one two three whatever it's going to be true so that is going to be a good indicator of false and true we can use that as a dispatching mechanism set list dispatch and say okay dispatch this to with this pattern what we want to dispatch is the fragments so check that out we are uh, dispatching the fragments or the parts with this uh, logic so the logic is uh, make a random point on the surface project it on the ground see if it's inside the boundaries or not and if it's if it is or not just dispatch them into group true and false and now we can have that let's just go give a surface to the list a and another one to the list b we can just turn off everything and just select this one now you can see that it's completely getting what we want even if the parts are intersecting it's going to give us the inner parts okay so that is how you can do that uh, okay after we have uh, produced this cutting mechanism and getting the a pot in which is inside the dome you can also use that uh, for example you can bake that into layer one bake that into layer two maybe use that even in your project if you want to give the cutting part but what I want to do here is to convert this part into a, a quad mesh so I'm going to go to the mesh triangulation quadri mesh 
give it to here. Uh, if you want it to be on the curves, on the outer boundary curves, just uh, I think that if we select a curve and give it to the boundary, it's going to give the boundary curve. So just give that to the guides. It's going to give you better results. The setting is, I think, 2000 uh, parts. So we can go to this uh, mesh triangulation quadri mesh setting and, for example, give the target count of 200, for example, and decrease that. You can see if I decrease it, it's fixing this part. So, for example, when I increase it, we have this star connection here, which is not good. Just decrease that to reach a good result. And that's how we can convert that into a quadri mesh. I'm just going to say, bake that. And use it in my project and uh, the problem here is that when we change the radius of these cutters it's going to slow down the process so if you want to get a faster results what I prefer to do is to make a switch here and the switch is going to be like this uh, we can go to sets sequence and call pattern and say a toggle uh, do we want a quad or not so here you can see that it's not giving any output and the quad is not running and if it's true it's going to give you an output so when it's false how can we see the result we can just copy paste this call pattern and invert it so we can see the base surface and when it's true it's going to then convert that into uh, the quad remesh. Now if I wanted to change that really fast um, I'm also going to turn on this circle so I can see the boundary turn off the ellipsis maybe and let's play around with this cutting technique and you can just start designing. This is really great because uh, you can have more control on the openings You can even bring that a little bit forward. Maybe I can make that a bigger. You can see that it's going to cut it like this. And maybe put this the zero, this one near 0 0.5 to make it symmetrical. Maybe an opening here like this. And if you want to complete symmetry, you have to put these two numbers uh, like the same right because these are the two ellipses and that's for the second one, the third one and now we can have that as the base surface and use that in our project or we can just convert that into a quad and uh, another thing about the quad thing is there is a symmetry here if you want a complete symmetry maybe we can say that it's asymmetrical in the y-axis so this is going to give you a more symmetrical mesh in the y-axis. You can also make it in the x-axis. It's going to cut it and the z-axis, which I don't know what's going to happen, but it's something like this. And we say none because we want a complete mesh. You can use the kangaroo plugin if you want to make them maybe the same, but the tutorial is about how you can uh, convert a hemisphere into a quad remesh for a dome, parametric dome. Uh, I hope this tutorial was useful and thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.